Greetings all you wonderful people in the digital world and welcome back once again to another episode of Spliced In Later where we are doing my most favorite thing to do on this show which is to talk about and review a new movie that has just been released in theaters and it's one I'm very excited to talk about with you today. I know I say that about all the movies I review but I am genuinely very excited and if you are a frequent listener to this show then you would agree and understand because it is a new Marvel Cinematic Universe film and we are about to talk about and review the new movie, Eternals. Yes, if you are a frequent listener to this show, or if you are brand new having clicked on to hear the review, what I've been doing quite frequently now, probably getting a little out of hand, is that I have been talking a lot about all the different properties and the evolution of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It is one of my favorite franchises of all time, as I've said before, because of the ever-expanding world that all these different franchises inhabit. They go and have their separate film series, Iron Man, Captain America, Guardians of the Galaxy, all of them, but then are able to come together in team-up films, also jump into each other's films, exist in a whole cinematic universe. We're up to 26 films now, and it does not seem to be slowing down, and it is ever-expanding, thanks to Disney Plus putting out all these TV shows that are pretty good stuff as well. Apologies in the background if you can hear my lovely cat Ali. She has decided to jump up on my desk and scratch the chair. She's wonderful and I love her, but come on now. Anyway, so if you're interested in my previous stuff, we've been either going through the history of Marvel Cinematic Universe, I believe we've discussed five films now that have already come out before I started doing this, and then we've been looking into the new products that have been released as of 2021 this year. I love you, Ali. Stop doing that. Whether it's the TV shows on Disney Plus or the two new movies before this one that came out this year, Black Widow and Shang-Chi and The Legend of the Ten Rings. It is generally considered, and I'm sure you will expect it, that with most of these things I give a positive review. I'm very enthusiastic about it. But at the same time, I'm not completely glassy-eyed. Marvel Cinematic Universe is the best thing ever and they can never do any wrong. I am able to recognize where there are faults, that some movies are not good as others, that some are far superior than others. For example, I was a bit, I wouldn't say unfair, but I was very critical of Iron Man 2 being essentially an Avengers trailer. Whereas I gave support for the Incredible Hulk film because I think it gets a bit of a bad rap when as a movie itself, it is a solid thing. Same with the Disney Plus TV shows that have just released. I enjoy them, but I can understand if they have unsatisfying endings, if they drop the ball here or there, but at the end of the day, I have fun with them and I enjoy talking about them. So this one, Eternals, that we are about to talk about now, is especially exciting because of a few reasons. One, it is one of the many fatalities of the 2020 COVID pandemic that delayed so many movies. Eternals was supposed to come out a year ago, as of today, I imagine, November 2020. It was supposed to come out before Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, and it was supposed to come out before quite a few of these Disney Plus films have now been released. Sadly, that is not the case, and instead we have had to chase the film, essentially, with teaser posters and teaser trailers. It was always going to come, but as with pandemics, things take off, cases rise, cases fall. You never really know if a movie's going to come out. So I was excited to get to this date and actually be able to watch it, especially since here in Australia, we just went through yet another lockdown. Second reason being that as much as I do love seeing sequels to all my favorite MCU properties, the Iron Man sequels, Thor sequels, Guardians, Ant-Man, they've all had sequels mostly by now. I am very excited that with this new phase four, we are delving into new properties and new stories and whole new worlds to explore. Because now we've had our big finale with Avengers Endgame, we have to, well, I don't, we don't have to, but Marvel and Disney have to prove that they can continue on after that and still deliver great stories, original content, hinting at overarching plots, but basically they can't rely on Thanos is coming anymore. They can't rely on the Iron Man and Captain America because Robert Downey Jr. and Chris Evans have moved on. So these new properties like Shang-Chi or the Eternals, is their, I wouldn't say gamble, but it's it's new and it's risky and it's intriguing and it's new concepts that have not been touched on before. Because the Marvel comics, as much as I have not read them extensively, I know that there's just millions and billions of characters and really after 26 films, the MCU has really only scratched the surface. The trailers for Eternals looked interesting, incredible, exciting. 
I was hotly anticipating this one more than I was anticipating Shang-Chi, more than I've been anticipating other movies coming out this year, whether it's the new Spider-Man film, the upcoming Dune, or the new Matrix film. There's a few other films that normally I would be super excited for, but Eternals I have been more excited for because it's new, it's different, and it's intriguing. So obviously, what am I going to say about the Eternals? Basically, you can probably read my enthusiasm but I absolutely loved it. I was anxious and worried going in because the last week Rotten Tomatoes has not been kind for Eternals. The critic consensus seems to be that it's either so-so or not good. In fact, at the moment, I believe it is the MCU film with the lowest Rotten Tomatoes score. Now that means nothing in the long run. Rotten Tomatoes doesn't mean shit to me. I love many a film on Rotten Tomatoes that's probably got a 9% and I don't like films that have probably got a 97%. At the end of the day, it comes down to what you like in movies and your personal palette. So that's one thing to take away. If Rotten Tomatoes says a movie is bad, you can take their advice, but don't just take that for fact. You have to go and see these movies for yourself. And I do hope that everybody goes and sees Eternals and makes up their mind for themselves. Because boy oh boy, is it great. It's a lot of fun. It's Bold, it's new, it's exciting, it looks incredible, the acting is incredible, great direction. It is a proper phase four MCU film in that it strikes out in new directions that have not been anywhere approached by any other previous MCU property. It is a property that relies on establishing its own identity without relying on going, hey, remember this, remember that. Apart from a few offhand references to Endgame, which Let's face it, it's a big enough event that it's going to reverberate through a lot of things coming after this. But as much as I love Shang-Chi, it did rely on going, remember Wong? Remember Trevor Slattery? Remember the Abomination? Remember all these things? And then there was a bit of an offhanded, it's time for the Avengers. Shang-Chi is going to be an Avenger. Remember the Avengers? This film, not at all. You could be forgiven for not knowing it's even part of this universe. And it does not try to make sure that you know that. Maybe that's the issue. Maybe people don't like that they're not spotting their favorite MCU content. Maybe because it's not following the same MCU formula, and it really doesn't. It does not follow the same heroes have to fight a villain. They have to have a big bust up fight at the end. They've got to go through a, a journey to go here and there and do some comedy stuff along the way. It is a unique journey, a unique experience, and one that I think everybody needs to appreciate and experience for themselves. I can't really give you the plot. I normally I would give you a plot review or a, a little little a little hint at what's in the movie, what it's about. I don't want to do that because there's quite a few twists and turns in here that are exciting to experience and definitely some that will catch you off guard. It certainly caught me off guard. I get caught off guard by a lot of things in movies, but I did talk to people after seeing this and they were also caught off guard. So if I can allow you to do that as well, all the more better. If I have to give you a really basic idea. It's basically this. Eternals is about a group of beings called Eternals. They were created by even greater godlike creatures called the Celestials, and they are sent to Earth to protect it from these beastly creatures called the Deviants, which have come there to kill humans. They came here many thousands of years ago, and all they have done, all they are allowed to do essentially, is protect the human race if Deviants show up to kill them. Apart from that, they are sworn not to interfere with humanity in any way. Don't give us the knowledge and the expertise to create weapons or things to help us uh, plow fields or anything like that. We all got to do it for ourselves. We can't get involved if world war breaks out. They couldn't even get involved when Thanos wiped out half the universe. That's their, their sworn mission statement from the Celestials. The movie flashes a lot between present day so 2025, 20, 26, wherever they're up to at the moment in the five-year jump for the MCU, and the past. So the past storyline is seeing them arrive on Earth and take out the Deviants and seeing them work together as a team. And then in the present, they've all been split up. Something happened during this time in the past that caused them to drift apart and not be this strong family unit team that they are because they are essentially a family. They work together. They have these bonds, these friendships. They're very connected to each other and you can feel that bond absolutely. But something happened. So now in the present, they all live in separate places doing separate things. They all have different opinions on humanity and the Celestials and the Deviants and their mission. But something happens 
And Cersei, played by Gemma Chan, who is basically our protagonist of this film, or at least the main Eternal that we focus on, has to go on a quest where she has to unite all the Eternals together to do a thing, to stop a thing, to prevent a thing, however you want to say. Shenanigans ensue, and we have our movie. And that's about it. You want to know more about the plot? Go see Eternals, because it's a great plot. It's uh, quite a, not a convoluted plot, I would say, but there is a lot going on. So you cannot just go to this movie just as an offhand, oh, I'll just go sit down. It's a Marvel movie, so I can just turn off my brain and just enjoy a good fight. No, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of character development, a lot of twists and turns, a lot of serious issues. There's still comedy in here, as there should be for Marvel products, but it is a very intense two and a half hours feature that requires your attention and is a very riveting, engaging story that earns every minute of it. There's not any pacing issues, in my opinion, except for the very, very end, which we'll touch on in a minute. What I really, really like about this film, 100%, is the characters and the cast. Our main core of Eternals. We've got Cersei, played by Gemma Chan, Icarus, Richard Madden, Kingo, Kumail Nanjiani, Sprite, Leah McHugh, Bastos, Brian Tyree Henry, Makari, Lauren Ridloff, Druig, Barry Keown, Gilgamesh, Don Lee, Ajax, Selma Hayek, and Thena, Angelina Jolie. So that's a lot right there. There's more characters here than in a standard original Avengers team up of six. They are all our Eternals. They all have their own different powers. It's very x men in terms of each one has a unique power that's unique to them, but they have to work as a team. Powers help each other out in certain situations. Ajax can heal people, but you can't heal naturally. Icarus basically is Superman with the powers that he's got. Cersei can turn one thing into another. Fastos has the superpowered mind. He can use that to engineer weapons and scientific discoveries. Makari can run fast. From the moment you meet them all, it is a very slow build as you learn who everybody is, what their motivations are, what their relationships are with each other. There are some Eternals that are more closer with one person than another. Cersei and Icarus are the main relationship romantic power couple that you focus on and, and follow in this film. But you've also got some other connections between Thena and Gilgamesh, Druig and Makari, Kingo and Sprite. There's a lot there. And what's really great is that each character has its own unique personality. There's not one character that's just there for comic relief or the other that's just there to be the muscle. They have their own personalities, their own goals in life, their own views of humanity. But at the very core of it, you feel a real sense of a bond between these Eternals, between living together for 7,000 years, for going on their mission for the Celestials. It is a very warm bond, the relationship that they have, that you feel for them when they break up, when they disagree, when they start to have to get into fights, and that not everybody is going to get out of this film alive, which is another important thing to note. People do die in this film. No one has plot armor, essentially. People can die at the drop of a hat, so it's important to realize that in a movie where you only met these characters in this film, I felt by the end of it when they were fighting the villainous bad guys and the plot to end the world and all of that stuff, that I was seriously on the edge of my seat worried that if a character would die because I was that attached to them. And that comes down to incredible casting, incredible acting, and incredible personality and character development and growth that all these characters go on. The film also looks incredible. It's directed by Chloe Zhao, who is a fantastic director. One of my favorite films she's ever done is Crazy Rich Asians. The film looks beautiful, whether it's showing off the Eternals' powers, the, the landscapes and the establishing shots of all the places around the world that they visited throughout time as well. We check in to Babylon, to Mesopotamia, so a few other places for sure. It all looks great. I'm sure lots of it is CGI, obviously, but it's very beautiful. The colors are very vibrant here as well. All the different Eternals have a different color theme to them, which looks great. Working as well in conjunction with incredible music by Ramin Dejawadi. He's one of my favorite musical composers for film and TV of all time. He did the music for Game of Thrones. Regardless of how you feel about how Game of Thrones ended, that music was on point from start to finish, and it comes off here as well. The plot. Now, the plot everybody seems to be having a trouble with. That seems to be the main complaint I'm looking at when I look at reviews for this film. They say it's a big convoluted mess. It doesn't know where it's going. It's all over the place. It, it wants to do more than it actually is, blah, 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 blah. That's the thing that really frustrates me. Before this film, the complaints you got for, say, Black Widow or Captain Marvel or whatever, 
is that the MCU films are starting to get stale because they follow the exact same formula. We have a heroic protagonist, they have to do a thing, they face off against a villain that's essentially them but evil, they have to stop a doomsday weapon, all of that stuff. Eternals, there is essence of that in there, but it's done very differently. We have no real super bad guy in this film. That's one thing to take away. You do not have an established villainous bad guy that everyone has to fight. There's morally gray characters, especially within the Eternals. The opinions that they have about what to do and the direction of where the movie is going means that there is a split. People disagree, people argue. But apart from that, the essence, the essence of the story is basically reuniting everybody, re-establishing a friendship, a trust, a family that was broken. Seeing that journey as they go along, they have to collect each Eternal one at a time, where they are in the world, what they're going on, what they're doing. It's great and it's engaging and it's really exciting because they've spaced this out. They have their action pieces in the middle, but that two and a half hours flies by because you're waiting to see each Eternal pick up and see where they're going and see what the relationship is like at the moment. And it's extremely entertaining. A side note, there is a comic relief character in here though, who is a human called Karun. He is Kingo, played by Kumar Nanjiani's valet. He's absolutely hilarious. I loved him. He stole the movie in certain cases. I think it was great that he got to do more in the movie than Kit Harrington's Dane Whitman, who's really in this film to establish him as possibly being a superhero in future films. If I have to give any fault to this film, which is very little, I would say that the film does struggle when it comes to finishing its story. It has a very good job of really instructing and getting you to learn who the Eternals are. You don't feel confused or you don't not understand where everybody's coming from or what the ultimate goal is. But there is a point about midway to the end of the film where the film starts to worry about moving people into places on the chessboard for future installments, which is a thing I'm worried about for future MCU products. I feel like the Thanos storyline, the Infinity storyline was so successful that Marvel may jump the gun and want to get into their next big thing quickly and forget that what makes the MCU so strong, especially in the beginning, is taking your time, taking patience, going, okay, we need to establish this character, we need to give them a good origin story, we need to set them up in their own stories, doing their own things. This movie, it's, it's for example, say you saw Iron Man and you saw Iron Man fight Iron Monger and he'd announced to the world that he was Iron Man. But then right at the end of the film, suddenly you were introduced to characters and plots and situations for future Avengers films, future Iron Man films, but you don't know who they are yet. So you're going, what's happening here? That's what happens in the Eternals essentially. It starts to focus on potential sequels or potential future of the MCU, moving people into place for that that the film doesn't really have a satisfying ending. It gets very muddled in that last three minutes and then it just stops. And that unfortunately knocks it down a level for me from being a perfect film. It's just that real mess of a conclusion that failed to wrap up. Maybe once we see other future MCU products, this stuff might make sense, but looking at it as a movie, as its own thing, movies still need to end. It's the classic desolation of Smaug where uh, Hobbit part two, where it just said, okay, we've told enough story, stop. You do need to wrap it up in a satisfying way. You've had people sit and watch two and a half hours of a really great story and really great characters. You need to give them the satisfaction of ending that story for now. Take some stuff, put them in the mid credit scene, that's fine, that's what we're here for watching MCU films, we love that. But aside from that, end the film. But that's my only real nitpick, and it is a nitpick. It's just annoying, it does need to be addressed because it did ruin my viewing experience just a little bit. But aside from that, it is definitely one of the best MCU things I've seen in a while, especially since Endgame and Far From Home in 2019. I've enjoyed the Disney Plus TV shows. I liked Black Widow. I really like Shang-Chi, but there's still that sense of sameness that each one had, which I was waiting for a new flavor, a new something new to the palette for this MCU universe to let me know, okay, we're in new different directions here. We're going to do something different now. We're going to evolve from our experiences. And Eternals really does that. It is a great, well shot film by Chloe Zhao. Music is wonderful. Excellent characters, fantastic acting to make us love these characters in the very brief time we've known them and their struggles within their Eternals group and with humanity as a whole. 
and just a really great time for sure. I give it a nine out of 10. As I said, doesn't get full marks because of that one thing. If it didn't, if it was able to wrap up the film properly in a satisfactory way, it might get full marks from me. It's definitely, when I go and look at my top MCU rankings, I believe Eternals is gonna be near the top for sure, which is fantastic. It's what I wanted and it's what I got. So I'll wrap this chat up by saying, if you are interested in seeing Eternals, I'm sure most people will be. I mean, it's MCU. It's got that Marvel logo on it. At this point, people should be going, that's oh, Marvel. Okay, I'll go see that. But you might be put off by all the negative reactions from critics online, all this. There's this thing at the moment. I don't know. It's like people are wanting to hate a Marvel film because so many have been good. That it's just this weird thing that human race has where it goes, okay, I can't wait for something to be shit. It's like people who are really happy that Rise of Skywalker was a terrible Star Wars film. They were just like, yeah, yeah, Star Wars sucks. Isn't that great? It's very strange to want to be disappointed by something and want something to be terrible. I don't like that. I want people to make up their own mind. If you go and see Eternals and you don't like it, it's not for you, that's totally fine. That is the world we live in. Everyone is allowed their opinion and I will not hold that against you but don't let other people tell you it's bad and just say okay they say it's bad so it must be bad see it for yourself and I hope lots of people see this film I hope they allow themselves to appreciate the great filmmaking and the great acting that's in here allow themselves to let new exciting places of the MCU into their hearts and don't just go where's my where's my Nick Fury cameo where's my bad guy fighting bad guy Where's my comic relief characters? Where's my silliness? Where's my hint at Thanos 2.0? What's, I don't recognize that character, therefore I hate it. I wanna see Spider-Man again. Like, allow to accept new things. And if you don't like it, you've at least given it a chance. But I loved it, and I can't wait to watch it again very soon. And there we are. Thank you very much for listening to my very enthusiastic review of Eternals. I hope you all go see it because it's definitely worth it. I'll be back next week, I believe, for just a regular episode. I don't know what I'll be talking about as per usual. I'm sure I'll come up with it at least a day before I have to record it. Hopefully a little bit before that, but knowing me, unlikely. But until then, thank you for listening. I love and appreciate you all. Stay safe, be kind to one another, and I'll catch you on the flip side very soon. You've been spliced in later. Adios, muchachos. I'll catch you next time.